As a senior software engineer currently working, I've had a lot of experiences with software engineering interviews. I've done so many interviews. I'm at a position where I can look at an interview and give my genuine thoughts on how to improve. In today's video, we are going to analyze an Evernote interview that I had in the past. Let's get started. Hi. Hey there, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Hey, how are you doing today? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Um, I'm okay. Yeah. <laughs> So that is not a good response to how are you doing today? Typically, you want to respond with small talk. This is your chance to show your charisma and social skills to the interviewer. The better response would have been something like, hey, I'm fine. I just finished drinking coffee and I am totally ready to take on this Evernote interview with you today. Or, hey, I just finished work and I am totally excited and ready for this interview. I've been preparing for this you know something like that would have been a lot better and more natural so responding dryly with a nervous laughter afterwards is not the best first impression um how are you i'm doing pretty well the idea that we're going to work through is basically you know given an input that looks uh looks kind of like this uh-huh um and, and you can read this as basically being um a sort of set of things um, that, that depend on each other. So all of the different keys in the in the object are the things um, that we would like to build. So we'll call them build targets. So let's see, function. Um, I guess it's called valid words, right? Sure. And I have a dependency map with me. Notice it hasn't even been 10 minutes into the interview and I'm already trying to write code. I haven't even done an outline or a diagram on my general approach to solving this problem, which is what should have been done first. I should have made use of the comment section and comment out what is the recursion going to look like? What is the input? What is the base case? What am I returning? I should have had all of that discussed and designed before I got into coding. The mentality that I unfortunately used at that time was, hey, I kind of understand what this problem is kind of like, so I'm just gonna go code and I'm gonna think about it as I move along. That is a bad strategy because you're just gonna box yourself into a corner and it's gonna be very difficult to get out of it if you have not set the requirements and the expectation in the beginning. I think it's bar property an object, I think, is it? I think what you actually want is just uh, object.keys as a method of object. Object.keys? Yeah, I can ah. I see. From an interviewer's perspective, I expect my candidates to be pretty fluent in their language of choice. Object.keys is a native command that you use to get the keys of an object. And as a JavaScript engineer, I should have known this. And instead, I wasted precious time asking. The more appropriate questions you can ask your interviewer about your language are things like maybe you forgot a library name, maybe you forgot how Lodash works, but something like object.keys, you should absolutely know. I'm not sure how this actually has gotten us anything different from what we started with. Like, this looks to me like now we have a map of the same keys we had before, except for maybe we have more now, to like a value object instead of just the list. But like the value object effectively only contains the list. Yeah, um, so already 20 minutes into this interview the interviewer is raising up a concern this is not good because this should have been discussed prior to coding and instead he has asked me something that indicates that he's confused or unsure about where we're going and i am digging my own grave by defending my choice this late into the interview i have no choice but to commit to what i have already started and this is where i fail 
I failed this interview because I did not know topological sorting. I did not do alien dictionary beforehand. This was the very first topological sort question that I've ever encountered. There's actually nothing I could have done to have passed this interview. I simply did not have enough practice to sufficiently handle this interview. That's what it was. Anyways, um, yeah, thanks so much for, for taking the time, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Anything that sort of you're curious about um, or that I can tell you about kind of before we wrap up? We've got the, the business team, which works on sort of the back end of the uh, Evernote for Business kind of product. If you have not done your technical interviews well, there's really no point in really engaging too much in the Q and A's towards the end. At this point, the interviewer has already made up their mind and the questions that you get to ask towards the end about the job is more of a formality sort of thing. So the technical interview is by far the most important part of this. And if you did not get it right, then, you know, you just have to try again another time, another day. And at this point, we're just wrapping up here but this was a great learning experience for me. If you like this analysis, please leave a like and subscribe to my videos. I will have more leaked interviews out in the future and I will also have analyses for them as well. So thank you guys. I appreciate your support. See you on the next video.